Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 14 of Shop at the Shed. I hope you're all having a lovely evening. Now, this is Wednesday night, not Thursday. Um, uh, if you follow my uh, vintage bag experience videos at all, you will have heard that I am going to make a change, and that change is what's happening right now. Uh, having back-to-back -back shows was a little overkill, I think, and uh, having a day in between is a nice little break for me, a little break for you, and just allows me a bit of extra time to get the bags organized. Saying that, I've been running around like a crazy person because it's like, ah! It's Wednesday, not Thursday. But anyway, a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, the bags are all pre-loved. They are not brand new bags. So there will be, um, in some cases, some minor signs of uh, wear. Anything that I am seeing, I absolutely will share with you. But just so that you do know, they are not brand new bags. And if that bothers you in any way, then obviously... This is not the purchase for you, but you don't need to purchase to come and hang out with me. So that is uh, neither here nor there, but just to let you know, they are pre-loved bags. There's no refunds, exchanges or returns. However, if you are um, having an issue with something, please reach out. I'm not uh, not looking to you know trick anybody or pull the wool over anybody's eyes. If, if you've bought a bag and it's damaged or whatnot, um, or something has happened, please let me know. If you've bought a bag and you just decide you don't want it anymore, then unfortunately um, that is not going to result in a refund or a return. Please make sure that you've watched this video, obviously, and you've looked at the listing, the description. Um, there's multiple opportunities for you to check the bag out and see if it is what you are absolutely looking for. Shipping is not included. It is extra unless you spend over $100 and then I will cover the shipping for you. So that is about it. I am shipping to the US and Canada right now. All the bags are in Canadian dollars. And that is about it. They are all cleaned inside and out, refurbished where need be. No rips or tears or broken zippers or handle straps or anything like that. Refurbishing is just me recoloring in the corners, uh, taking care of any dry leather patches. But to be honest, most of these bags don't need that. Uh, my vintage bags um, in my Etsy shop, Leather Bag Lady 1, they need a little bit more attention than these bags do. So let's get started. What shall I show you first? I'll show you the wallet first. So I will typically show you five items, one of which being a small, which is usually going to be a wallet, um, a small coin purse, change purse, uh, leather pouch, belt, something of that nature. So far, I've just been doing wallets because I have so many wallets. So <clears throat> this is a fossil mock croc. Now, I'm going to encourage you um, to head over to leatherbaglady.com, which is my website, which is where all of these items are listed and let you can have a better look at it. There is some distressing in the mock. You can't really see it. It's not staring at you. So I'm not sure if that was meant to be there or it is a fossil. So they do kind of lend themselves to a more vintage look. So I'm not sure. I was tempted to keep this one myself, actually, because it has both the zip around section and the, the snap section. So the zip around section is just kind of bills, receipts. There is a coin little uh, spot in the middle. I don't think this wallet has ever been used, which is why I'm a little suspect as to whether that kind of uh, patina is meant to be there. And then you have all these coin uh, card slots. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 card slots, not including the ID pouch. There are sections here as well. And this is going to, this is going to, it has a little bit of uh, girth to it. So it's going to expand. It's a big wallet. It's, it's a decent sized wallet. I really like it. And I really had to think about it. <laughs> 
I'm trying to downsize my wallets, not get even bigger. But I have a beautiful Cole Haan wallet and it is looking pretty nasty right now. So that is our small item by Fossil, one of my favorite, favorite brands. That's going to fall over. Let's put it here. Okay, so this little bag I absolutely love. It is not suede. It is called Nubuck. So it's like a brushed uh, leather. It is this kind of, it almost looks like that, um, you know, that Crocodile Dundee where he's got that waxed green jacket. It almost looks like that. It does have a little bit of a nap to it, but it's not suede. It is, um, it is Nubuck and I love the contrasting dark green smooth leather strap. I just love this little bag. I've thought about keeping it also quite a quite a few times. It is by Modi, M-O-D-I. It is a Italian made in Italy. Now I have a feeling this might be a vintage bag. I've tried to do a little bit of research. There's no phone pouches. That is how I date my bags in my Etsy shop, Leather Bag Lady 1. That is how I date my bags, by the foam pouch. It's got a very silky interior. Your branding is, is right here. Modi, made in Italy. It has a zipper pocket here. That, there's a little bit of a film in that. I have a feeling this is a vintage bag. So that just feels a little bit, it's no, I think it just needs a little bit of a wipe. So cute, cute, cute little bag. Just something different. Love this uh, strap connector. Just something a little, little different. Love it. Love it. Love it. One of my favorites. Mind you, all my bags are my favorites. I'm running out of space. There we go. All right. So. Let's take care of our purse pound bag today. So if you've been to um, an episode of Shop at the Shed, then you will know what I'm talking about when I mention the purse pound. So I come across bags regularly that are brand name bags. They are beautiful quality. They've just got a little bit too much wear for me to offer in my regular platforms. But I just think, for the sake of a few marks or a few scratches, you're going to condemn this poor bag to the landfill? Hell no. And here we have. Now, my next, if I ever have an, a crazy purchase ever again, it would be the Louis Vuitton Artsy, I think it's called. And it has the pretty well the same strap as this. This strap is in absolutely gorgeous condition, as well as the connectors, the hardware. Where this bag finds itself in the purse pound is the color transfer. There's color transfer here. There's color transfer here. It's, there's marks in the corners. A little bit of uh, darkening here. It all seems to be on this one side, however. There doesn't seem to be a tiny little bit there that you can barely see. But really, there's not much on this side. I This kind of hobo patchwork, I love it. Now, a little bit of history on Lucky Brand, because I was doing some history on Liz Claiborne recently. And Liz Claiborne at one time owned Lucky Brand, but not anymore. Lucky Brand actually doesn't exist. In 2020, they filed for bankruptcy. COVID kind of put the nail in the coffin, unfortunately. They were struggling prior to that. Um, they were purchased by a company called Authentic Brands Group. So I'm not sure if they were going to revive Lucky Brand in any type of major way. Um, 1990 was founded by Jean Montesano and Barry Perlman. 
and the focus was on vintage inspired goods. And I love Lucky Brand. Lucky Brand is very much a mall brand. Most of my bags are mall brands. I had a lady today ask me if I purchase bags and I don't buy bags privately just because the the money that I have to spend to be able to offer bags for $35, $45, $55, $65, I don't want to insult anybody. Like I literally need to get bags for $15 or less. And that is getting very, very, very difficult to do these days. So when I come across, like I said, bags that for no reason other than just a little mark here or there, I mean, this bag is beautiful. So what else was there? So in 1970, these gentlemen started a, G, a denim company called Four Way Street in Florida. So it's always been a very hobo, vintage, um, kind of uh, blue jean based brand. It is, it is fabulous inside. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Uh, where there is your branding, Lucky Brand. And there is your beautiful canvas. Let's see if it says. Made in China, unfortunately. Cowhide leather. Beautiful. I really, really like this bag. Warts and all, I really like this bag. So this bag is my purse pound bag. Much like the dog pound, this bag needs a new home and somebody to love it still. So that is why I created the purse pound. So that is our pound bag. Okay, our next bag is this large coach jacquard backpack so let's unpack i'm gonna bring you down a little bit actually i hope my phone doesn't fall out of the holder okay so this bag had an issue when i first got it in that this portion of it was missing so i'm gonna undo the little bow and open it right up so this portion was missing it kind of threads through this little pattern area like a, like a tie, like a man's tie. So I have added this black scarf. Now the scarf is quite lengthy and it was even longer. So I trimmed it and it is a bit of a raw edge. So if you are a seamstress or if you're, if that bothers you, then by all means you could just put a stitch in the end of it like the other side. It's nothing fancy. I thought about gluing it and then I thought, no, it'll make it too um, hard. So I didn't want to do that. So you have a pocket in the front. There's your uh, coach hang tag. The pocket goes all the way down to the bottom. So that is going to be very useful for your phone and things that you have to grab quickly. A little bit of a top flap. There is your coach branding on the outside. It's quite a big bag. You've got these nylon uh, straps at the back. They are adjustable. So you will be able to, um, you know, fit it to your back or just keep it on your shoulder. I tend not to wear backpacks on my back. I'll put them on as shoulder bags. But this was just really unique. I much prefer the leather coach bags. Now this bag has quite a bit of pen damage inside. Doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, then this obviously is not the bag for you. Pen is the worst thing to be able to get out. Sometimes on this kind of nylon fabric, um, rubbing alcohol will get it out but I did not have any luck. And the last thing I want to do, and I've experienced in the past, is if you disturb it too much, it just ends up being a huge smudge. And I, I think that looks worse than, than what this looks like. There is your um, Creed. And it's just a really neat, neat bag. Now, if this scarf doesn't work for you and you have something better you want to put in there, then by all means... But I just, I like it because it's long enough that you can kind of tie it in a little bit of a bow and has a top handle as well. 
nice, uh, you know, nice base on it. A little different, something a little different. I don't come across a lot of backpacks, but the last little while I've been coming across quite a few. So that is our coach item. And then last but not least, this was uh, a request by um, a viewer. This is a beautiful, beautiful Cole Hahn black leather shoulder bag with this really fun um, chain detail. Cole Hahn is one of my favorite brands and it is such a sleeper brand. So a little bit of history. Cole Hahn started its life in Chicago in 1928 as a men's shoe brand. And it was originally called Cole, Rude, and Hahn. They, um, they were bought out by Nike at one point. And then Nike um, wanted to sell them. No, actually... Yeah, Nike owned Cole Haan and Umbro, which is a uh, Scott, like a British uh, soccer sports athletic wear brand. And they sold off those two brands to focus on their own Nike brand. But this bag, I mean, I'm going to give you a pop of color and it is just going to wow you. Look at that beautiful, beautiful color. So it has a... Uh, wipeable monogrammed beautiful blue fabric it's a bit dusty there are some scratches on the plate here nothing too crazy this little bit lifts up and then you just pull that off but look at that color it is beautiful it's got a little bit of weight to it there's quite a bit of leather on this bag but look at how beautiful that is. So you've got your leather lined slip pockets on this side. And then you've got a leather lined zippered pocket. And then you've got your branding. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. You've got your branding and you can put a little card or something in there. Probably where the care card went back there. There is a little uh, key. A little key guy. I don't know if you can see it right there. You can attach your keys. I This brand is so classy, in my opinion. I just think it's one of those brands that, you know, doesn't get a lot of attention, I feel. I don't know. I see it occasionally with my uh, reseller colleagues, but um, not a lot. But I had a, a viewer request to look at this bag. So there we go. That is our last bag of our five. So the bags that were in this category last Thursday are now booted out. What is left and is in the uh, regular collections. So basically all that means is you can come back into leatherbaglady.com at any time and see what is available. You don't necessarily have to catch the episodes, but if you do, um, what, I what I am doing is my YouTube videos have the number of the episode in it as well. So actually maybe I should do that. I should go through all my listings and put the episode number of that bag. So if the customer wants to see it in the video. All right. That is something that I'm going to do. This is a new project for me. We're a couple months in, so I'm kind of, you know, reworking it as we go, which tonight is a prime example. Normally my shows are Thursdays and Fridays, but no, they're going to be Wednesdays and Fridays moving forward. So have a great rest of your evening and I will see you on Friday. Bye everybody.